important question, edification. Will this make me stronger, edify me, make me stronger, build me up in the Lord? If I participate in this, will this make me stronger in my relationship with the Lord? That's a great question to ask. Uh, you can ask that question about a party, can't you? If I go to this party, and this party is, maybe it's an office party or, or a, a, you know, a neighbor's party, and I know what they're going to be doing there, and uh, it, it's not very edifying, it's not very glorifying. Matter of fact, there's going to be a lot of things done there that are, that are going to grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, if I go there and participate, will it make me stronger in the Lord? How about this third question? Evangelism. Will this help or hinder my testimony? If I do this, will unbelievers say, what's the secret? If I do this, will, will unbelievers say, that is a Christian. What a godly man or woman. Or will they say, you call yourself a Christian and what are you doing that for? It's a great question to ask, right? And the fourth question is example. Do I want believers to follow my example? Hey, the best way to look at that is your children. What you do in moderation, your children tend to do in excess. If you do that, well, we need to put the kids to bed because this is an adult activity. Well, okay, I, I understand that maybe there are some things that children can't participate in, such, such, such as sexual relationships between a man and a woman, certainly, but sometimes maybe it's something you want to watch or something you want to engage in, and uh, you're putting the kids to bed because you don't want them to follow your example. And maybe then you ought not to do it. The Bible says we're called to glorify God, and I think if we ask ourselves those four questions, they can be kind of parameters and boundaries. Uh, is Jesus glorified in this? Will this make me stronger in the Lord? Will this help or hinder my testimony? And do I want other believers to follow my example? I mentioned tattoos. I think tattoos are pretty cool. I don't have a tattoo, and if I did, I want to tell you. And I don't think in the New Testament that tattoos are forbidden, but I will say this, I will say this, uh, before you get a tattoo, ask yourself some questions. Think of the cost, think of the motive, think of the message, think of the future, and think of your testimony. Because when you're 85 years of age, you're going to be having that tattoo. Or when you go and apply for the job, you're going to be having that tattoo. And it might help you or it might hinder you. Anyway, there's just some great questions to ask. We're supposed to live our lives to the glory of God and make God-honoring decisions. Jesus Christ sent us into the world not just to, to do a work and not just to be incarnational, not just to glorify God, but, but number four, to seek and save the lost. The Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. He has come to call not the righteous but sinners to repentance. And he has sent us with the exact same work to do, to seek and save the lost. The Apostle Paul told believers in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 12 to 13, to stop judging those who are outside the church. It is wrong to expect those who are not Christians to live as a Christian. You agree with that, don't you? I can't believe they're living their life that way. Are, are they Christians? No. Oh, they're living like a sinner? Yes. Did you before you got saved? Well, of course you did. Of course you did. The Bible literally tells us in 1 Corinthians 5 to stop judging those outside the church. Because they're not Christians and it's wrong for us to expect them to live as a Christian. Jesus Christ came to seek and save the lost, and I love John 3, 16. His attitude towards the world is what? For God so loved the world. So stop judging them with self-righteous and hypocritical judgments and start loving them with the love of Christ. 